Okay, geometry students, in this video we will be looking at three theorems and two corollaries. Now, we have never had corollaries before, so this will be something totally new, okay? We will also learn an exception today to the principle that I taught you earlier this year. You can't use side, side, side to prove that two triangles are congruent. So we are going to learn an exception today in which you will be allowed to use side side angle okay all right let's go ahead and copy down our heading for today our heading for today is isosceles and right triangles the lesson number is 4.6 and be sure and include today's date okay isosceles and right triangles and the lesson number is 4.6 and be sure and include today's date all right now here we go Let's go ahead and get started with our first of three theorems that we will be looking at today. Okay? Here it is. This is the theorem 4.8 base angles theorem. Okay? Now here's what it states. Copy this, copy this in your notes, please, students, so that you have this in your notes. Okay? If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Okay, copy this in your notes. I'll pause a second while you copy this down. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Okay, now here's what this theorem is saying. I'll give you another second to copy this down. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Okay, here's what this theorem is saying. Copy this down, please. Here's a triangle. Okay, copy this down. <laughs> not, not like that. Okay, here we go. Now, let's call this A. We'll call this B, and we'll call this C. Go ahead and put a mark here and a mark here. All right, now, if what this theorem is saying is this. Write this down, please. If A, B is congruent to BC okay then angle A is congruent to angle C this angle here is congruent to this angle here okay now here's what we're saying this side here is congruent to this side here so if two sides in a triangle are congruent, then we can draw a line straight across and say that those two angles opposite those two sides are congruent, okay? So these two angles here, A and C, are congruent. And how do we know that? Because these two sides here are congruent, okay? Now, let's do a quick proof of this theorem. It's really not too hard you will be responsible for this proof on tests and quizzes, okay? So please pay really close attention. Also pay, pay, pay close attention because when you do your homework, uh, number 25 will be proving theorem 4.9, the next theorem, and it's done very similar to the way this proof is done, okay? So let's take some really good notes. You're welcome to work ahead. Please feel free to work ahead if you want to. Let me sure to keep one eye up here and uh, make sure that you're doing it correctly, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and prove theorem 4.8, all right? If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Now, here's the deal. Remember, students, when you're proving a theorem, the first thing you do is you draw your picture, okay? So here we go. I'm proving that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then their opposite angles are congruent. So my picture is going to be a triangle like this, okay? And let's go ahead and call it triangle A, B, C. So please understand the first thing you do when you're um, proving a theorem is to get a picture of what you're doing, okay? Now, we know that we have two sides that are congruent. So I'm going to mark this side here congruent to this side here. So we've got a pretty good a pretty good drawing here, okay? 
we're going to call this angle here just angle A and we'll call this angle here angle C of course so let's come over here let's put our given part remember your given is always your if part okay here's what it says if let me back up for a second so students the first thing you do is draw your picture next you list out your given if two sides of a triangle are congruent so AB is congruent to BC okay so if two sides of a triangle are congruent then that's your proof part so now we list out our proof part then the angles opposite them are congruent so we're trying to prove that well let's see what are the angles opposite those sides angle A and angle C so we're trying to prove that angle A is congruent to angle C okay now here's what we're going to do I'm going to kind of brainstorm here for a second okay now listen we know that there's a point right here okay and we know that on any segment there's a midpoint somewhere so I know the the midpoint is the midpoint exists so I'm going to put a point there and I'm going to call it the midpoint we're going to call that D okay and I'm going to draw an auxiliary line right here so I'm just kind of brainstorming right now okay now remember if I drew this line here in such a way that it hits the midpoint and this is truly the midpoint which I'm allowed which does exist so I'm allowed to do that then if D is truly the midpoint of AC then I know this segment here has to be congruent to this segment here okay now having said that we know that this side here is congruent to itself these two triangles this triangle here and this triangle over here both share the same side right here so I can prove that this triangle here we'll call it triangle number one is congruent to triangle number two over here and once I state that those two triangles are congruent then I can state that their parts are congruent which means I can state that this angle here is congruent to this angle here so I've got a pretty good plan okay so here we go let's go ahead and do this okay let's go ahead and put for number one our given so here's our given take some really good notes on this okay and you are responsible for this on tests and quizzes all right number two now I'm gonna put draw B D such that D is midpoint and you know what would your reason be for that well I would just put um, two points define a line and you could put something else you could put just drew a line it's fine. I'm not really worried about that okay there we go now number three let's think about this okay students let's think about this I already stated in my proof earlier that AB is congruent to BC right here okay this and this well I can definitely state without a doubt that BD is congruent to BD it's the same line right here so put two marks here okay and of course the reason would be reflexive anytime that you state the same thing is equal or congruent to the same thing we call that the reflexive property okay so reflexive property now next I can definitely state that AD is congruent to DC because definition of midpoint 
remember we already stated up here that D is the midpoint so definition of midpoint so I can put three slashes here and three slashes here now look what we have students we have triangle A D B this triangle right here A D B this triangle right here is congruent to now be sure and match up the corresponding parts for the corresponding parts so this is A here we're going to say C over here so C and then we said A D so C D and then up to B okay and, and the reason of course would be side 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 okay we have three sides of this little triangle over here congruent into three sides of this little triangle over here and then lastly look at this I want to prove that angle A is congruent to angle C well here's A right here and here's C right here so angle A is congruent to angle C and of course the reason will be what we learned the other day CPC T C corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent okay so that's a really good proof of theorem 4.8 okay keep track of that make sure you have that in your notes and make sure you learn that okay okay moving on um, moving on to theorem 4.9 here's theorem 4.9 please copy this in your notes you're responsible for this and I will wait for you just a second to do that okay if two angles of a triangle are congruent then the sides opposite them are congruent now what this is really is just the converse of theorem 4.8 okay it's the converse of theorem 4.8 in theorem 4.8 we said if we have opposite sides congruent then the opposite angles are congruent in this theorem we're saying if we have opposite angles congruent then the opposite sides are congruent okay so theorem 4.9 is the converse of theorem 4.8 okay now let's go ahead and take some notes on this and please take some really good notes all right here we go go ahead and draw a triangle and then we're going to mark this angle here congruent to this angle here all right and here's what we're saying now watch this carefully please students if write this down angle a is congruent to angle C then their opposite sides are congruent so where's the opposite sides well here and here so then we can state that this side here is congruent to this side here so then a B is congruent to CB okay so if two angles in a triangle are congruent then their opposite sides are also congruent okay theorem 4.9 and we're going to use these theorems a lot 4.8 and 4.9 so it really makes you understand them we're going to use them a lot in some of the math problems that we do okay okay moving on now let's pause for a second and talk about what a corollary is okay why because we are about to look at two of them before we look at our last theorem so if we're going to look at two corollaries let's pause for just a second and let's look at what a corollary is okay so here we go here's what a corollary is you are not responsible for this definition on upcoming quizzes or tests okay so you do not have to know this definition but I'm going to give it to you anyways just so that you know what a corollary is okay so here it is a corollary is a theorem that follows easily from a theorem that has already been proven okay so a corollary is a theorem it's a type of a theorem that follows easily from a theorem that has already been proven okay so here we go look what we have with that in mind there are two corollaries that follow nicely from the two theorems that we just learned okay and so here they are write these down please corollary to theorem 4.8 
So we'll understand, students, we just had a theorem 4.8, and now there's a corollary to theorem 4.8. You need to know this. Write this down. You're, res you're responsible for this, okay? Cor corollary to theorem 4.8. If a triangle is equilateral, then it's also equiangular, okay? So if a triangle is equilateral, then it's also equilateral. If a triangle is equilateral, then it's also equiangular, okay? So with that in mind, here's an equilateral triangle. Kind of. Not really, but maybe. Hopefully. It's a triangle that needs a lot of prayer. All right, there we go. Now, equilateral, so we're going to mark this, this, and this congruent. And here's, here's what we're going to put. Okay, take some really good notes on this. If triangle ABC is equilateral, which it is, then we can also say triangle ABC is equiangular, okay? Which means if all three of these sides are congruent, then all three of these angles are also congruent, okay? So pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty cut and dried, okay? All right, let's take a look at another corollary. Here it is. Okay, corollary 4.9. Now, this is the converse of the previous corollary. And here it is. If a triangle is equiangular, then it's also equilateral, okay? If a triangle is equiangular, then it is also equilateral, okay? So I'm not going to draw this out and make it longer than it is. It's pretty self-explanatory, so just take some really good notes. If a triangle is equiangular, so all three angles here are congruent, okay? So if triangle A, B, C is equiangular then triangle ABC is also equilateral okay so there we go pretty simple so if you're given a triangle in which all three angles are congruent then you know right away that also all three sides are congruent. Okay? So theorem 4.8, if a triangle is equilateral, then it's equiangular. Theorem 4.9, if a triangle is equiangular, then it is also equilateral. Okay? All right, moving on. Now, lastly, here is the theorem that contradicts not being allowed to use side, side, side to prove that two triangles are congruent, okay? So here it is. Take some really good notes on this. Okay, students, so here we go. Now, theorem 410, the hypotenuse leg, HL, congruence theorem states, if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent, okay? So take a second and copy this down. Take a second and copy this down. I'll, I'll pause while you do that, okay? This is called theorem 4.10, the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem, okay? Hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. If the hypotenuse and leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent, okay? Go ahead and copy this down. This is going to be really interesting, okay? So pay attention. It's going to be really cool how this works, okay? So please pay attention.
Okay, a couple more seconds. If the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent, okay? Now, please take some really good notes, students. Watch this carefully, okay? Go ahead and draw a right triangle, unlike mine. Yeah, I'm consistent at least. <laughs> All right, now, here's what it says. If the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to a hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle. So, look what we got here. Please take some really good notes, okay? Here's my right triangle. Let's call this A, B, C, D, E, Z. There, I fooled you, didn't I? All right, now watch this carefully. If the hypotenuse here is congruent to the hypotenuse over here, and if the leg here is congruent to the leg here, then we have congruent triangles. Now hold it. Look, guys, this is side, side, angle, congruent to side, side, angle. And I told you you could not use that to prove that two triangles are congruent, okay? So let me show you why it works with right triangles, okay? Now again, this is really cool. You don't have to take notes on this. Just watch, okay? Now watch this carefully. Okay, now pretend for a second, students, that this is my angle here, and this is my angle, and this is my side, and this is my side. And I think I showed this to you guys before, how what you can do is have a triangle that has angle side side, but then over here, you can have another triangle just like it, in which you took this side right here and you swung this side down like this and it came back up and hit over here. So now I have this side here which is the exact same length as this side here. So what I have is this. I have a triangle. Hold on a second. Just watch this, okay? You might not understand this. If you don't, that's fine. But I can have a triangle like this that comes up like this and then instead of coming over like this it comes down like this and hits here and this angle here is still the same angle here and this side here is still the same length as this side here and this side here, because you just took it and swung it around so that it hit here, this side here is the same length as this side here. So you have side, side, angle, side, side, angle, yet the two triangles are not what? They are not congruent. So, Mr. Earhart, why does why does side side angle work with right triangles? Well, here's why. Think about this, guys. Watch this. This is so easy to prove. Watch this. If this side right here was straight up and down like this, like this, Think about it, guys. I cannot swing this side. I can swing it, but if I swing this end point right here, it's only going to go up like this. It would never hit uh, this side here if I extended it, and if I swung this side here this way, it would just go up 
it would never hit this side again right here because this, this line here is going perfectly up and down so it's already the shortest distance from this point here to this point here. Now listen to me, some of you totally understood what I just said and others of you did not and that's okay. I'm not going to test you on anything I just said but I wanted to show you why in the situation of right triangles side side angle does work okay and we call this the hypotenuse lay congruence theorem okay so here we go very quickly let's wrap this up okay here we go and we're just about done the video is almost over so here we go if triangles ABC and DEZ are what? Right triangles and AB is congruent to DE and AC is congruent to DZ then I can state what? Triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, Z. Okay, so if you're dealing with right triangles, all that you have to know to state that these two triangles are congruent is a hypotenuse and leg of one triangle congruent to a hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle. Okay? Hope that makes sense, Theorem 4.10. Now, if you'll look, when you get a chance today, uh, look at the bottom of page 198. And when you do that, you will see the 15 steps that are used to prove this theorem here. Now, no, I'm not going to make you memorize this proof. And no, I'm not going to make you do it on your own. However, if you'll look at the bottom of page 198, you will see they have not given you the reasons for the 15 steps. Now, contain your excitement. I'm just kidding. But for finding these 15 reasons will be part of your homework when you have homework. Okay, so do understand that. And, of course, on the help video, I will help you with that. Okay? All right, I hope this video has been a help to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.